Okay, well, welcome everybody to, uh, to, to Radical Pi. Uh, and thank you uh, for, for the chance to be able to share uh, a little bit uh, more with you. And uh, well, in particular, to try to try to sell you on the idea of, of uh, proof assistance some more, which I think is kind of fun. So, uh, so let's let's take a look and see if we can get this to uh, to to work. So I'm going to push uh, push the button here, which will hopefully make uh, the Emacs uh, window appear. And uh, yeah, there's a question about how how the stream would work. So there's I think there's about a 20 second delay probably, but I, I do appreciate it if you if you type questions in the chat because that does make it make it more interactive. Um, but there is a about a 20 second delay, I think, which is maybe appropriate given how terrible my internet is here. Okay, so uh, so what I've got here is uh, is an is an Emacs uh, window uh, in uh, Agda mode. Uh, so you can see here, I've got the uh, the name of this event, Radical Pi, uh, and this is uh, you know uh, maybe an opportunity for me to be able to share some of this. So I definitely am appreciative to uh, the organizers of of Radical Pi for the chance to be able to tell you a little bit more about uh, about some of this stuff. And this is sort of the Agda story, which I you know I think a lot of you have seen um, me me do before. Uh, but I think it is uh, maybe uh, appropriate, given the online format, to do something like this. And and at the end, um, the goal will be to to get to some of this stuff on uh, on left shelves, which is kind of fun to see. I think in the in the in the Agda um, world. The other thing that's maybe a little bit better about this particular experience, as opposed to uh, some of the other ways we've seen this, is that uh, because this is a kind of a stream. You can see the the keys as I type them, uh, which maybe helps if if you yourself are are loading up uh, Agda uh, in in Emacs and want want to see this thing want to see this thing go. So um, okay, so how does how is this supposed to work? So uh, the kind of gimmick here with everything that we've been doing with with Agda is this idea that uh, that proofs are programs. So there's the, the behind the scenes. There's some kind of typed lambda calculus story, and uh, what we want to do is uh, make connections uh, between the uh, kind of programming side of things and uh, the the types of those programs and the kind of uh, mantra is that the uh, the theorems correspond to the to the types, uh, and the proofs of those theorems correspond to the to the programs. So here's uh, here's maybe the the first example of uh, this sort of thing. Here's an example of, of an implication, and for this, um, you know, you pretty much just want to ignore that that stuff there. Um, let's just focus on on this here, and what this is supposed to tell you is that uh, B implies C. So take that maybe as a as as a statement that uh, if B then C. So let's say that holds, and if A then B. So we've got that, and we've got A, and we'd like to deduce C. And uh, the way that we're going to do that is uh, we'll use uh, the fact that B implies C, and we'll use the fact that A implies B, and we'll use the fact that we know that A holds, and we want to try to deduce uh, C. So I've given names to, uh, to these three things here. So G, F, and X correspond to these uh, three parameters here. So G is a proof that B implies C, F is a proof that A implies B, and X is a proof of, of A. And we have to somehow combine those things in order to get a, a proof of C. So let's, um, let's see how we, how we might do that. Um, Oh, I mean, I could I could put them in in a different order if you if you would prefer that. Yeah, that is that is definitely true. So I'm going to type uh, Control C Control L to load this file. Now I'll type Control C Control C, and um, well, I don't need to split on this. I'll do Control A, uh, Control C Control A, and that will find a proof um, automatically 
uh, for me. And you are right that I, I could put these in a different order. So the way that this is written here is uh, that I'm taking x, which is a proof of a, and I'm applying that to uh, f, which I called a implies b. Uh, f is a term of type a implies b. Uh, yeah, so the order of these things definitely is, I mean, the, it doesn't matter the order in which I write these things down. That's, that's absolutely true. So I, I could put them in a different order. Um, maybe, it's, maybe it's worth even, even seeing that. We'll do that in a minute. Uh, so, so fx is a proof of b, and g is the, uh, the proof that b implies c, if you like. It's a, it's a function that takes, you know, if you want to think of it as a function, you could think of it as a function that takes an element of b and gives you an element of c. But it's maybe more accurate to say that uh, that G is a is is a you know really a, a term of uh, type B arrow C. Okay, but yeah, I can I can put these in uh, in in a different order. So if I want to, I could um, I could write A implies B, and then B implies C, and uh, I could whoops I could load this file in. Uh, it's a bad sign that Ag is busy with something. Let's try loading the file again. There we go. And now I can do Control C, Control A, and it finds a proof. And it it doesn't matter that you know the the names that are bound in the opposite order. Okay. So hopefully that makes uh, some sense. Uh, you know, I think this is an example of kind of an, an implication. I will keep on going, but definitely if you have questions, please please feel free to to stop us so we can we can kind of get get back on track here. So here's here's a definition of um, the uh, the the natural numbers. And this is sort of a good I think this is a good thing to think about because it's sort of a, a different kind of definition maybe than than some of the things that that we've done before. Um, That is true. Yeah, you could you could definitely go here, and uh, that's that's a that's a great question. So you you could include sort of just extra things if if you want, um, you know, to try to to try to make it uh, maybe seem, uh, you know. So maybe here's here's an example um, while this thing uh, loads. Okay, so now I'm going to do Control C, Control A to find a proof, and it found it found a proof. Now, what's maybe a little bit, um, you know, maybe worth pointing out is uh, I could do the same thing. Here we go, and I'll Control C, Control L this thing to load. So when I load the file, uh, Agda is type checking it. So the, the process of loading the file is really verifying that uh, that the uh, the theorems uh, in the file are correctly proved because it's verifying the types and the theorems are the types of these things. So now what we've got are uh, are are you know it's the same theorem, right? I mean I've I've got two different terms with the same type. So I've really got two different proofs of the fact that a implies b implies a implies b implies b implies c implies a implies c right and in the first one i'm using uh g prime which is this uh uh, uh implication and in the second one i'm just using g which corresponds to to this implication so although these are you know maybe you know, it's the same theorem, so to speak. Both an implication and another implication are are the same. The same uh, uh, have the same the same type. Uh, nevertheless, I've really given different proofs. I mean, not you know, not thrillingly different proofs, but the, the different proofs of uh, of the same the same theorem because I'm invoking different things here. Yeah. Okay. And that's maybe maybe the an exciting point, right? I mean, that's that's why this is sort of proof relevant, right? I mean, you are we're not just proving uh, uh, theorems; we're actually caring about the specific proofs that we find for for those theorems, you know. And that's a sense in which this kind of type theory story is a way of doing uh, kind of proof relevant mathematics, where uh, the proofs themselves are mathematical objects that, that you can pass around and, and reason with. 
Okay, so here's, uh, here's a definition of uh, the natural numbers. So we've got, um, I guess because it's a computer science world, zero is a natural number. And then given a natural number, I can find a successor natural number, which is the SUC, uh, which takes a natural number and gives me the next natural number. Okay, so, um, so now, uh, ooh, I guess I wanna define um, addition. Uh, so I want to define something that takes uh, two natural numbers in and gives me uh, a natural number out. There's lots of functions that, that do this, but I'm trying to write down the one that's actually, um, it's actually addition. <laughs> okay, uh, then I'll load that file and that type check. So I've written down a function, uh, n to n to n, which, um, you know, hopefully you believe is, is, uh, is, is addition. Um, we can try, uh, we can try it with something like um, successor, successor zero plus successor zero be a thing that we could, we could try to compute. And it's three, right? Because that's two plus one. And it, it computes that that's, that that's really equal to, to three. So we want to do a little bit with, with addition. Uh, so we'll try to try to prove some things about about addition. Uh, before we can really prove things about about addition, uh, we got to do some some work to get uh, equality to to make to make sense in in this context. Okay, so so here is uh, the the definition of. Uh, this sort of, of equality. And the way that you produce uh, a proof that uh, something is equal is by invoking reflexivity. So uh, if I've got a term uh, x, which is a term of, of type uh, a, then uh, REFL is uh, the proof that uh, by reflexivity that x is is equal to x. Now what what follows here are some other properties of of equality which um, which maybe uh, you know some of these are things that that maybe we're, we're used to thinking about um, but we're giving names to them because we're going to use them later uh, in in the in the proofs that we're going to write down. All right so this this first one is saying uh, what exactly? Well, we've got a function from uh, A to B. So I've got a term little f of type big A arrow big B. So A and B here are, uh, it says here that they've got, uh, that they're terms of type set. And set is just Agda's name, if you like, for, for a type. So, so big A and big B are, are types. And then uh, here I've got uh, terms x and y of, of type A. So this is the sort of thing that I could apply f to in order to get something of uh, type B. All right, so I've got that stuff. Then I've got uh, an arrow. So now I've got uh, x equals y. So a term of type x equals y is uh, evidence that x is equal to y, right? Now, the only way we can produce that evidence is, you know, is through reflexivity, but um, which, of course, after the fact, then tells us that you know x and y are, are equal, of course, and that's that's the whole point. You know, that's that's what we're trying to. That's what it means for things to be equal. So, so maybe this you know sort of makes makes some sense the way this fits together. Uh, so I've got this. I'm defining a, a term uh, Kong. It takes a uh, function f, uh, it silently takes in uh, x and y, and it takes in um, evidence that x is equal to y, and it spits out uh, evidence that f of x is equal to, to f of y. You know, so this, this um, you like this operation, uh, you know, congruence, uh, you know, is really is really getting at this idea that uh, you can do the same thing 
just two sides of an equation and and it's still an equation right which is the sort of thing that maybe often goes without saying um, but we're given it we're given an explicit name to it here uh, and now the the next two things are maybe things that make more sense in the context of, of just the equivalence relation story so this is um, uh, symmetry oh silent um, well okay so there's a couple of things that are silent. so there's there's curly braces here. Probably, they probably look a lot like parens uh, on the uh, on the stream, but these these curly braces are um, parameters that uh, what will you know not they're they're not um, explicitly given when we when we invoke um, Kong. Uh, and I mean I don't know I mean I don't I don't I don't want to say I don't want to be too disparaging about this, but I mean I think a lot of times. You know what? What's the the feeling that we're going to have here is that we're we're going to be going through a lot of work to prove things that I th I think in a normal world people wouldn't make such a big deal about all of these steps. So maybe we're we're uh, um, you know s making some of the things that would be um, tacit uh, and we're making them very explicit, you know, you know, in this sort of context. Okay. Uh, let's see, and then we've got um, got symmetry here, which says that I've got inequality between x and y, and that I can get inequality between y and x. And then I've got transitivity uh, here, which is uh, starting with inequality between x and y, between y and z, and producing inequality between x and and z. And the the, the proofs of these things maybe seem a, a, a little anemic, I mean, because all we're ever doing is just ruffle, 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 ruffle. Um, but of course, that's that's how we show that things are, are equal is by invoking reflexivity. Okay, so so that's pretty good. And then here you notice there's this built-in equality. That, that's helpful for Agda to at least, uh, you know, so that it can do these things a little bit faster. I mean, the built-in natural, for instance, you, you might have wondered how, how did Agda know that successor, 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 zero should have this name, uh, you know, but it's because we, we told um, Agda that this, uh, that, that this type is actually the type of the natural numbers. So this symbol um, actually refers to a term of, uh, of, of that type, a specific term of that type. Okay. And then this, this is telling us the, um, uh, the precedence for, for these operators. Okay, um, let's see. So now I want to give a proof that um, that uh, zero is is the additive um, is is the additive identity, and I guess there's there's really two. There's two different ways to to go about this, which which maybe will maybe maybe this will be in, instructive. Um, okay, so uh, okay, so so here um, I'm writing down uh, the type that says. Well, uh, maybe maybe this isn't how you want how you want to write it, but it's. It's the it's the type that takes a number, a natural number, and produces a term of type zero plus a equals a. So so this will take a number a and uh, prove that zero plus that number is equal to that to that number. Um, this you know so I can I can put it in a question mark and and Agda will try to to come up with a proof and I can ask Agda for proof and Agda found a proof I use control C control A for auto uh, proving where it just tries to find a proof and refl is is the proof and then maybe you know maybe well that seems a little bit funny but I mean the the point here is that if we go back to the definition of uh, of, of of what plus you know, how we defined plus zero plus x is defined to be x. So the fact that zero is uh, is an identity on that side, you know, is, is just a consequence of the definition of, of plus. So maybe we're not, you know, maybe we're not that impressed with, with the fact that 
uh, that zero is, is an additive identity on that side because of how we defined addition. But we, we could alternately, uh, you know, you, you, whoops. <laughs> what? One sort of fun thing about this, I think, is is getting to see how how you enter the symbols in into Agd into Emacs when it's in Agda mode because it is it's not so clear when you're first learning this. I mean, the fact that you can type backslash i n and it makes a little you know element of symbol, you know, or backslash b capital n makes a, a bold n. So that's anyway, it's good to know some of those things if you're trying to do this at, at home. Okay, so uh, so I want I'd also like to show that zero is an additive identity on on that side, uh, which again will will require us to write down uh, given an element a, we have to write down a term of type a plus zero equals a. Now I can ask Agda to do this, and um, Agda will say no, no solution found. Um, so one thing uh, that that I could do is, um, whoops, I can split on on that that variable a. So that variable a uh, is is a natural number. So a natural number is either zero or the successor of some of some nat natural number. So I can uh, I can cover those those two cases. And uh, let's see if it can come up with a proof here. Agda is busy with something. <laughs> Agda would, so there we go. So so REFL works in this in this base case, because what what has to be shown here? Um, let me let me do this again. Whoops. <laughs> Try this one more time. Okay, here we go. So, uh, so here it's telling me that to fill in zero, z this this hole in my program labeled zero has to be a term of type zero plus zero equals zero. So I need to somehow uh, come up with a proof that zero plus zero equals zero. Uh, but zero plus uh, anything is defined to be that thing, right? That's why this zero plus up here was so easy to to prove. So maybe that's uh, have some explanation as to why reflexivity is is good enough there. I will lo load up Agda again, and it's thinking. There we go. Okay, now um, down here uh, in in this in this hole now, I've got to fill in a term of type uh, successor a uh, plus zero is equal to to the successor of of a. So, so this really is a, a proof by by induction, right? I've got the the base case here follows by uh, uh, you know, maybe just just reflexivity, but this inductive step, uh, I have to somehow come up with evidence that the successor of a plus zero is equal to the successor of a, uh, and, I, and I am allowed to use uh, you know the smaller previous uh, uh, evidence. So. How is this going to work? Well, I'm trying to produce something that that looks like this. Successor a plus zero is uh, the the successor of of a. So this hopefully um, you know maybe seems seems evocative based on our definition of of addition. The successor of a plus zero is equal to the successor of a plus zero. So. So to produce something here, uh, maybe if I if I type this in, it will seem seem plausible. I want to apply successor to both sides of of an equality, and this um, Kong will help me uh, to apply successor to both sides of 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 an equality. Great. Now it's telling me that to fit to finish this hole, I've got to produce a term of type a plus zero is a. And this is just fantastic because I've I've got one right right here. I mean that's that is the the previous step. So I think if I ask Agda to fill it in, yeah, it finds it that plus zero a, which is uh, you know maybe the the recursive step here, um, 
then uh, lets me lets me finish the the proof, and I'll use Control C Control L uh, to load this um, back into into Agda, and then it will it will fontify everything so it has the the nice colors, and um, yeah, the colors are very convincing because that's sort of how I how I I can see. Oh, Agda has accepted um, these these terms. Really do have uh, the type that I'm claiming. Plus zero really does have this type, and this is really the type that for all natural numbers, a plus zero is equal to a. So that's a that's a proof that um, that zero is the uh, uh, additive identity uh, on on the more challenging side. Of course, what side is harder is a consequence of our choice of definition. I mean, you, you could have defined uh, uh, addition differently, which would have, which would change which one is easier and which one's harder. Eh, it's just great. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe you know. I, I think it's neat to be able to see how how these things work. And the the analogy between, uh, uh, you know, sort of like like recursion and and mathematical induction, I think, is just very very compelling. You just never never get tired uh, advertising uh, that. Okay, so um, we've got about 20 minutes left. So, uh, okay, so let's, well, let's try to do um, commutativity of addition and then, and then we'll look at what the, what the proofs for, um, for left shells look like in, uh, in, in Agda, which is kind of fun too. Um, okay, so, so let's, do, um, let's do this, this successor function. This, this will be a good, a good thing to, to try. Um, so this this is uh, this is enough to show that um, sort of the more the more challenging side of um, how how it, how addition works, right? So we we defined addition so that the successor of a plus b is a successor of a plus b. That's not what's written down here, right? This is saying a plus a successor of b is a successor of a plus b. So to deduce this will will require um, some work, and by work, the only work that we can possibly ever do is is proofs by induction. So I'll do Control C, Control C, uh, and I, that will ask me to split on on this. So I will split on the variable a. Okay, so now it's telling me I've got to do these these two different cases, right? I've got the situation where a is zero, and the situation where uh, the first thing is the successor of something. So I will, um, well, let's see. Oh, okay. So yeah, ruffle is good enough there. Um, maybe maybe it's better to actually see it see it go. Um, let me let me load it up so you can see the term that. Okay, so it's it's wanting me to produce a term of type zero plus the successor of b is successor of zero uh, plus plus b, but these are the easy sides of um, zero being an, an identity, right? That's that's really this case up here. So there's uh, ruffle is good enough for for that. What about um, what about this one? So here. I need to uh, I need to produce uh, a term uh, witnessing this uh, equality. The successor of a plus the successor of b is the successor of the successor of a plus b. So um, well, by by definition, this is successor applied to to both sides. So so let's try uh, applying. Ah, you want to do yeah, you want to do transitivity um, here. I'm not sure that that transitivity is going to be immediately helpful for this, but you're absolutely correct that we're going to use transitivity in uh, in in a minute um, because we're gonna we're gonna want transitivity for uh, for for commutativity. So you're you're ahead of the game here in terms of seeing where we're going. Okay, so. Um, yeah, so let me let me let me just write down uh, um, right, what is I can't type um, yeah, more space is good. Okay, there we go. So that is uh, a uh, statement 
that a plus b is b plus a, right? So that's that is um, what we want, right? We're we're trying to get to uh, the fact that addition is is commutative. Um, and it's pointed out that uh, it's probably going to involve transitivity somehow. So let's let's see how that how that's going to go. Um, we're going to split on a. Push enter. Okay. Load this back into Agda. Okay, so the first thing I need here to finish my my proof of uh, commutativity is to prove that zero plus b is b plus zero. So that's that's like the base case for for commutativity, right? I just got to show that zero will will commute. Um, you know, and it's always kind of fun to see if Agda can come up with a proof. No, Agda Agda has failed. But um, if we load this into, oops, if we load this into Agda. I mean, if we, if we look at what this is saying, right? I mean, the the whole the whole game here, uh, you know, is is really just showing that um, b plus zero is is b. So it'll be good enough um, to do to do that, I guess. Let's see if um, whoops. Let's see. Um, Oh, okay, I see. I think I want to split this in the opposite order. Let's try this instead. The delays are kind of creepy, but I, they must be, I guess, because my computer's working so hard to stream everything. Okay, so I'm going to split on B. So let's try, oops, let's try loading this. No. Okay, there we go. So now I need a term of type A plus successor B is the successor of, of B plus A. So, um, well, this is the transitivity uh, kind of idea, I think, in the, in the chat. So I've got that A plus a successor of B by this sort of lemma here is a successor of, of A plus, plus B. So I can use transitivity and uh, to, to invoke transitivity, um, I have to come up with uh, a couple things. So I have to I have to find a plus the successor of b is equivalent to something, and that something then is the successor of b plus a. All right. But the idea is to use plus successor. So let's let's put that in here. Um, and we load it into Agda. It's thinking. It's angry. this okay. loading it in it's type checking it's checking really it's really checking okay so so I, 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 using the fact that A plus the successor of B is a successor of A plus B, it's got me a little bit closer maybe to what, where I want to get, right? Because this statement here now, well, the definition of addition says the successor of B plus A, that's the successor of B plus A by the, by the definition. So this looks like the successor applied to, to both sides. It, it is very, very tense. <laughs> fact that this ever works okay so now to fill in this to finish this proof I've got to figure out uh, uh, I got to have a proof of a plus B is B plus a and that that maybe feels a little bit uh, a little bit circular because <laughs> isn't that what we're trying to prove right that I wanted to prove that addition was was commutative but I I'm actually trying to prove this where the um, where the inputs are a and the successor of B 
So, uh, you know, this is a uh, prior uh, case. So if I put the point inside the, that uh, position and I do control C, control A, it found a proof. It's, it's the previous case of, of uh, commutativity. It's sometimes a little bit funny. I mean, how it finds these proofs of course, because it's just it's just finding something that has the the you know some term that has that has the appropriate type, and then I'll load it up again to convince myself that it's uh, that it's really working. That's great. So I mean, I think that's that's you know pretty satisfying. Um, there's maybe some you know you have to wonder kind of how why why we're working you know with with maybe the cases on on this side and maybe that makes you feel feel good or bad i mean i don't know and then the way that we've written it down maybe is a little bit uh could be seen as a little bit a little bit frustrating um you know explicitly having to invoke the the transitivity what what i think is is really satisfying is uh is just how strong the analogy really is with with things like like programming i mean here you know we're we're invoking uh transitivity uh and then we're we're implying that to uh you know if you like to a little lemma but invoking that lemma is exactly the same thing as as making a function call i mean a, a subroutine is a lemma you know and i think that that analogy between proofs and programs the sort of curry howard correspondence is uh, you know, is aw awfully deep, and I and I really wonder, like, where where are people really being exposed to this? Who who's promoting this? You know, um, it, people should make a bigger deal about it because I mean, it it really says that everything that we're doing when we're proving things, you know, is is really the same thing as the the sort of computer science side of things. And there's a, a lot of analogies to make between between these these uh, sort of different ways of, of approaching, um, you know, what seemed to be the, the same kind of thing. So that's pretty neat. Okay. Yeah, so I think lemmas are subroutines is very compelling. Um, oh, okay, so now there's just a ton of stuff in here um, with, with, left, with left shelves. Um, oh, here's a, here's a question. Um, Yeah, I think I mean so okay, so there's yeah, there's there certainly are are some choices about how exactly we're getting to these to these terms. Um and yeah, I mean I think if you're I think it's possible to use to use symmetry here maybe to make this look a little bit a little bit cleaner um in terms of the order in which these things are are coming up. Uh yeah, I have to think about that a little bit more, but that's a good question. I mean, it certainly, uh, you know, I hope if nothing else from this kind of experience, you know, you're you're inspired to uh, to to download a copy of this um, and sort of play around with this and see see what you can do. I mean, it's it's quite it's really a very satisfying kind of kind of activity. So maybe maybe you can come up with nicer proofs of some of these things. Um, at least here's a different way of writing them down, which which might be um, helpful. <laughs> for making them not not so terrible um the idea here is uh to kind of cook up some some notation with um these little qed symbols and a begin statement uh so that we can we can write down a, a series of of steps and not make it so so terrible so here for example we can we can write down um you know, kind of instances of of transitivity that maybe make it a little bit easier just to read what's what's going on. Okay. I I will certainly grade Agda. I mean the the hilarious thing is just is just how hard it is to prove anything in inside these these systems. So I mean I think uh, you know um, it's a lot more work. I would say. Um, and maybe something that's I think kind of exciting about um, 
you know, maybe the where these things are going is is the opportunity to come. To the people are working on more informal ways of being able to state the kinds of things that that they have been stating inside these these systems because it is it is a lot of work. But I mean, I'll help help happily grade it. Of course, I, grading it presumably means type checking it. Um, but then I guess I do have to actually look with my eyes at the um, at the theorems that you're proving to to verify that um, the 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 terms uh, that you're giving me actually have types that I'm asking for, right? Because that's essentially what we're doing, right? Is we we give you exercises where we're asking you to prove something, but we not only have to verify that that your proof is a correct proof of of a statement, but also that your statement is the actual statement that we wanted in the problem. So anyway, that's yeah. Grading is a more complicated more complicated process, maybe. Okay. Um, so this is also maybe a more complicated way of, sh of writing down some amount of, uh, of, of Agda code. Um, but I think you know, it's, it's maybe helpful to see what, what, this, uh, what this looks like. Um, okay, so let's look at the, the sort of unit of left shelf um, story uh, first of all. So, uh, so here we're, we're describing uh, what, it, what it would mean um, to have a unit of left shelf, and a unit of shelf, left shelf um, will be uh, uh, given by uh, a type A, and uh, that that type has uh, a term unit. So you know, in the kind of analogy here, we're imagining that you know we're acting as if A is a set that contains elements. Uh, so we're thinking that this set, which is the unit of the left shelf, has a particular distinguished element, the unit. Uh, there needs to be a way of uh, composing elements. So this uh, star operation takes a pair of uh, elements of my shelf and gives me a, a, new, a new shelf. Now, I, I'm also recording the, uh, the axioms that I want this thing to, to satisfy. So for um, little a, little b, little c, which are terms of type big A, uh, I want an equality of the following form. Uh, it's saying that star distributes over itself. So uh, a star b star c is a star b star a star c. And I'm calling that left because this is the left shelf axiom. I guess. Okay. And then um, there's a left unit uh, axiom. So this this thing that I'm calling unit, I actually want that to, to be an honest uh, an, an honest unit. So uh, I've got a, um, a proof for any element A that uh, A is equal to uh, unit star A and also on the other side that A uh, a is equal to A star unit. Okay, so so now I think it, it's kind of fun to see what the proofs of these things look like. So uh, one of the um, one of the results, and I I think this is um, you know this is maybe attributed uh, to Sam C in in the literature. Um, no problem. I'm glad you could come. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think Lean and Agda. I mean, they're all of these systems are type lambda calculus systems of some sort. I mean, the thing that's the thing that's really different is is you know, how much Agda um, really wants you to to actually write down uh, the the terms in in the lambda calculus. Lean would often have you writing down tactics. Which would, which would then help it find um, the the terms, and I think um, you know if if your goal is just to prove as many theorems as possible, certainly the tactics do seem to be faster. Um, but I think you know if you're trying just to play around with the lambda calculus sort of story, or you want to play around with type theory, I mean I, I think Agda is really fun for that, and it's really just so satisfying to see this stuff go. I think so. Okay, so let's let's write down a proof. Um, that a unit of left shelf is is associative, and what that means is that for a, b, and c, 
uh, terms of type big A, I need to be able to write down an equality um, between A star B star C and A star B star C. Right? That, that's what we would normally mean by associativity. Right, so we've got to come up with uh, such a proof. And um, let me load the file back into Agda. There we go. Okay. So we start out here on the one side, A star B star C, and we want to end up with A star B star C. And, uh, well, here we go. So <laughs> I'll sort of sketch through some of this and we'll do it again in a le maybe a little bit less horrible way. Um, you know, so for example, to get from A star B star C to A star B star A star C, that's really just invoking the left shelf property. So I write an inequality symbol and then in these curly brackets, I'm writing left because I'm invoking the left shelf axiom. So I, you know what's what I, what I think is satisfying is that you know all of this is really just a consequence of of the the kind of syntax that's been cooked up uh, right right here you know so this kind of e equational equational reasoning uh, you know is really just a consequence of of a little bit of um, kind of fancy uh, syntax that's that's been you know described in in this file. So there's nothing particularly deep going on um, with with this syntax. We're just labeling how we would get from here to here by giving uh, a term uh, which has the appropriate equality uh, type. All right, now to get from A star B star A star C and then to apply uh, you know, a, another instance of, of the left uh, shelf axiom, uh, I'm writing down left again, and what's maybe a little bit mysterious here is that you might think that these are different, uh, different versions of the left shelf axiom because here I'm applying it to A, B, and C. To go from here to here, I'm applying the left shelf axiom not to just A, B, and C, but to A star B as the first thing, and then A, and then C, you know, but it's smart enough to figure that out because it, it knows the types that it's trying to get to. So it, it'll figure out what, uh, what actually needs to go uh, in the uh, implicit. Here you see there's curly braces here around A, B, and C. So I'm not, I'm not actually uh, needing to, uh, to provide uh, those to, to left. Okay, uh, great. So now we can just kind of keep on going. Like to get from uh, this equality, sorry, to get from that uh, expression to this expression, I've written down <laughs> this fairly long thing, Kong, and then quite a bit of stuff here. Um, Let's get past this and try to do some things where maybe it's a little bit easier to see what's going on just because it's, uh, you know, that's a long, that's a long proof, I think, the way that it's written there. So here, for example, is, is a proof that a unital left uh, shelf, uh, every element is, is item potent. So A squared is A. All right, so for all A, I can show that A is equal to A star A. And how, how would we do this? Well, I got to start off with A on one side and end up with A star A. I use the right unit, which is an equality between uh, a term of this identity type, A equals A star unit. So that gets me from A to A star unit. This is maybe a, a moderately exciting moment if you haven't seen these things before. So what's happening here is that I'm applying left unit to this, uh, this function, right, is being applied to both sides of the equality for, for left unit. So remember that left unit uh, has the, the type uh, that uh, A is equal to uh, A star unit. 
And now I'm gonna apply this function, which takes a star to, to both sides of, um, of, of this, this equality, right? So this is, this is the function which takes uh, x and produces a star x, right? So I want to start with, um, with this, which is a star unit, and I want to end up with a star unit star unit, right? So I'm really using left unit, but I'm not using left unit at a, I'm using left unit at, at unit. So maybe I could, I could write that this way. And then I'm applying this function to, to both sides, which takes a star, right? So that gives me a star unit on the one side and a star unit star unit on, on the other side, which is, which is really what I want, um, right? Because I want to go from a star unit to a star unit star unit. All right. Uh, now I, I can use the, uh, the left shelf property to go from a star unit star unit to go to a star unit star a star unit. Okay. And now I want to go from a star unit star a star unit to a star a. So what I need to do is use the fact that a star unit is equal to a. And I need to use that fact uh, to, to reduce this a star unit to a and this a star unit to a. So uh, what I've written down here is uh, the symmetry applied to right unit. So right unit is an equality from a to a star unit. Sim right unit uh, is uh, is uh, the identification of a star unit with a goes the other way and then I want to apply that in both of these uh, both of these these positions so I can use uh, Kong with this function that takes X to X star X so that I can get an identification of a star unit star a star unit with a star a because sim right unit identifies a star unit with with a all right, so that's that's enough to get me item potence. There's some other things that I can get without too much work, um, like uh, this this property here that a star b is the same as a star a star b for all a a and b. Um, and I mean, okay, yeah. So that's that's a property, um, and then also that a star b is identified with a star b star a for all all a and b. All right, so I, I'm labeling, it's maybe also a little bit confusing the way that I've labeled these, but I'm I'm giving a name to, uh, you know, this sort of lemma, if you like, and the name of the lemma, you know, is hopefully reminding me what, what the type is, you know. So I mean, I'm, I'm writing down a specific term and that term has a particular type, and you know the name is is reminding me what that type is. It's it's the type for all a and b. A b is a a b. But I'm not putting parens in there. This is just a mnemonic device. So maybe what's important to emphasize here is this this triple equality symbol is is actually uh, you know it's it's just a, a letter in the name a b equal a a b. Right, but here it's it's actually playing the role of, of an identifier uh, for for actual equality, whereas here it's just a letter in the name that I'm giving to this particular term. Okay, so then you know once once you have these little lemmas, it's not nearly as terrible um, to write down uh, a proof of of associativity. So here's a much shorter proof.